Okay, imagine you're at the beach. In order to figure out if there are fish in the ocean, you dip an empty glass into the water and look inside. No fish in the glass? Well, there must be no fish in the ocean. Not too logical, is it? But that's exactly the type of reasoning that's plagued Dr. Jill Tarter for years. Astronomers like Tarter began searching for alien intelligence in our galaxy about four decades ago. In that 40 years, they've only managed to search 1,000 star systems, 1,000 glasses of water, while an unexplored cosmic ocean lay right in front of them. 40 years needs to be put in the context of how big the universe is how enormous this cosmic haystack is that we're trying to search through. And so, we've just begun. Dr. Tarter knows a little something about SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. She's an astronomer and the current director of the Center for SETI Research in Mountain View, California. Tarter, like many SETI scientists, was drawn into the search by the early work of astronomer Frank Drake. Drake looked at the makeup of our galaxy and created an equation to determine the likelihood that other intelligent life exists. By factoring in variables like the fraction of stars with orbiting planets, the percentage of planets that go on to develop intelligent life, and the length of time that an intelligent race lasts, Drake's equation made it clear. Scientifically, the odds are pretty good that we are not alone. But if you're hunting for E.T., where do you start? What would the sign of a technically sophisticated alien culture look like? It could look something like this. Television and radio signals like this are examples of artificially focused electromagnetic waves. And we've been leaking them into space for over 80 years. That means any planet within 80 light years of Earth is receiving them. Signals like this are simple to generate and use, and carry well over vast distances. That's why SETI scientists believe alien cultures might be leaking them just like we are. In 1979, as a young graduate student, Jill Tarter joined the hunt for these telltale signals. I was so enthralled by the idea that I lived in the first generation ever of human beings that could try and answer the are we alone question by doing an experiment rather than just asking the priests and the philosophers what they believed. By the early 1990s with NASA funding, Tarter was heading up the search at the largest facility in the world, the Arecibo Radio Telescope in Puerto Rico. Tarter became the poster child for SETI. Even Hollywood embraced her. Tarter is generally thought to be the inspiration for Ellie Arroway, the character played by Jodie Foster in the classic science fiction movie Contact. It seemed the golden age of SETI had arrived. Then, in 1993, Congress abruptly shut off all federal SETI funding. But that wasn't the end. Today, nearly 15 years later, something big is happening in this remote valley near Hat Creek, California. SETI's luck may be about to change. These radio telescope dishes signal the beginning of what many believe will be a SETI renaissance. If there is to be a breakthrough, the new Allen telescope array is the best bet. The reversal of SETI's fortune has largely been made possible by a $25 million grant from Paul Allen, one of the founders of Microsoft. On October 11, 2007, Allen pushed the silver button, bringing the first 42 radio dishes online. When completed, the Allen Telescope Array will consist of 350 separate dishes, Together, they can operate as a single virtual dish over 2,700 feet across, making it one of the largest and most sensitive radio telescopes in the world. It will be the fastest tool ever built to hunt for signals of extraterrestrial intelligence. 
Senior SETI astronomer Seth Shostak tells us how this new telescope will work. Now clearly we're trying to find evidence of ET and we're trying to do that by looking for a signal in what's called the electromagnetic spectrum, which is just a fancy way of saying the radio dial, at least for us. Now, let me turn on my radio here. Okay, now ah, you hear that static, all right? That's just all natural noise galaxies and hot gas between the galaxies and, and pulsars and quasars, they all make radio noise and it's everywhere on the dial. But if I tune a little farther here, hear that squeal and then right there, intelligent life, okay? And that's the difference between nature and some deliberate signal because it's at one spot on the dial. Nature does not make signals that are restricted to one spot on the dial in general. It just doesn't do that. Since the cosmos just don't make narrow focus signals like this, finding one would be an almost certain sign of an alien culture. So what is it about this new array that makes it more likely to succeed? The Allen Telescope Array basically is all about speed. We can look at more than one star at once. And so whereas in the last decade, we looked at about a thousand stars, in the next decade, we'll look at a million. That's because the Allen Array's field of view, the area of sky it sees at one time, is much larger than any other telescope. And it can capture millions of frequencies from multiple star systems simultaneously. Basically, the Allen Telescope Array is a SETI hot rod, with SETI astronomers at the controls 24-7. So if you look inside here, you kind of see where the rubber meets the road in terms of these antennas. I mean, the operation is actually, in principle, very, very simple. The radio waves come in from the sky, and then they come down to this Buck Rogers looking thing here. This is called the feed, but really all it does is it takes those incoming radio waves and amplifies them and turns them into electrical signals that then go down a fiber optic cable back underground to the control room. Now, this thing looks so funny because it's got to be able to pick up radio waves that are at various wavelengths from the, you know, from relatively long to relatively short. So that's why it has this tapered look. The back end here is for the longer wavelengths, the front end for the shorter. The antennas send everything they collect from the cosmos into this room. It comes in right back here. You think of what Frank Drake did in 1960. He had one channel of radio noise he was monitoring, one. Here we got 100 million channels coming in, and then we move up the dial to take another 100 million and another 100 million. The sheer scale of the search is almost impossible to imagine. Remember, in our galaxy alone, there are over 300 billion other suns, many with orbiting planets, and beyond that lie 100 billion other galaxies, just like our own. Even in its current configuration, the array's virtual dish gathers nine times more information than present-day processor technology can decode. That means 90% of what the telescope observes is simply thrown away. So for the next decade or two, the technology in this little room will be playing catch-up with the dishes outside. We know that technology is going to continue to advance at an exponential rate, and so all this stuff will be replaced in another five years by yet faster machines, which allow us to look at more star systems, more channels, in other words, to speed up the SETI search. And as that search accelerates, Tartar and other SETI scientists are thinking about the consequences of success. If we detect a signal, we'll do everything that we can at this site to make sure that it isn't our own technology that's fooling us, or that it isn't a deliberate hoax. If we get an independent confirmation, then we will, in fact, tell the world. Because a signal isn't being sent to the Allen Telescope Array, it's being sent to the planet Earth. And the planet Earth deserves to know about it. But once the world has been notified, then what? Let's just say an official response plan probably won't be necessary. If you ever announce that you've detected a signal and give the description of what it is and where it's coming from, anybody with a transmitter is going to get on the horn and shout whatever they want. 
and wouldn't that be just about the best characterization of 21st century Earth in an unorganized cacophony? That's exactly the kind of thing SETI scientists are seeking. Even the accidental noise of an alien culture would answer one of the most ancient questions of all. Are we alone? Humans have been asking it forever. The probability of success is difficult to estimate. But if we never search, the chance of success is zero. <laughs>